I'm going to have to start this all over again because I wasn't recording. Well, um, you're recording now. You're recording now. No, I've just started recording. That's oh, hilarious. my God. The great part is, the great part about that is that people don't get to hear the part where we were swearing. So, oh. yeah, so please give props to you. <laughs> Under the same way, you, Oh, he just flicked out. Ah, uh ah. -uh. I said what I did here. <laughs> Baba Victor. Apparently. What Apparently. plane are you, what plane are you tuning in from? Because Victor. Eric, are you getting all of this, by the way? Eric, if you're getting this, do like this. That way I know to that. To type the question, on. you type slash Q, space, then the question. Slash Q, forward slash Q, space, then the question. So um, like Oo said, if you have a question, just type forward slash Q, and then your question, and it will show up in the pane. We'll be able to answer your question. And you can leave a comment. Fantastic. Um, Oo's done that. If you're viewing this from your PC, then you can see that there's a question on the left side. If you're viewing this from your mobile, all you have to do is just um, do the same thing, or you can just type in the messaging pane, and we'll see what you're saying. And um, we'll be able to answer your question. Um, fantastic. I can see two people trying to call in. Unfortunately, we won't be able to take your call um, at Etunji because we're waiting for um, Emeka Okoye to take the final seat. It's four of us. No, Blab is not from. Why do people say I'm flattered? No, Blab is not from from this lab, so. No, no, Blab is from the guys that did Bebo. Why do people just believe me so much? <laughs> Apparently, people. So people have been asking me if Mary was the one that built this because Mary was another call with me earlier. Father Mary, Mary yeah. Father Mary is currently in California with the Paystack team, which is um awesome. And people were asking which, the Nigerians which, which that built not, this, which is not supposed to be like told by you up, 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 until they decide. Yeah, man, that, that news is already still. No, but hey, um, Tim, are you with us? Yes. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can. We can. Can you hear us? I, I, I for, for some reason, I can't get my video to work. Uh, I don't know. I, this will have to suffice. Um, this is my first time actually using Blab, so mm. um, I, I probably should have been made aware that we're going to be using this platform rather than Google Hangouts. That would have really yeah, helped. Yeah, we, 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 changed, we changed that last minute. Um, but you're here now, so show has to go on. I will start introducing people again because um, apparently I wasn't recording when I introduced Oo the Nigerian the first time. So um, as you can see, Oo the Nigerian with the headphones, with his hand on his face, is the CEO and co-founder of Callbase, a telephony software as a service company based out of Lagos in Nigeria, but is a global company. They're doing really cool stuff. You can think about them as the Twilio for no, Nigeria. No, 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 not no. at all. If Google Apps, my brand. if um, um, okay, I, I would explain it later on. Yeah, explain later on. And Tim Akimbo is the CEO and founder of Timber Objects. Timber Objects is an enterprise software development agency that is currently focused on providing mobile data collection and data analysis tools, which is super geeky. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but it also means that they make a lot of money. Am I right, Tim? Tim? Am I right, Tim? Hello, Tim. Um, I'm not sure that Tim has a great connection wherever he is, but I'm just going to dive into the, you know, yes, questions. Yeah, I've been wondering myself, you know, so I've been DMing him on Twitter, you know, to get him to join us but at some point. <laughs> Question. Will, yeah. Why is uh, Bankole trying hard to speak like a Kanea Newcaster? To be honest, this is how I talk, man. Yeah, man, <laughs> chair boss. And you've lived in Ghana so long that it will sound to you like a Ghanaian broadcaster, so someone else would say, you know, it sounds well, like... Well, it's better than a, a Nigerian radio OAP. It has 12 accents. Look, this is not about me. Um, <laughs> this is about you guys. And I've only been able to manage to get one of you to show up. So let us just jump into this. Shall we? Shall we? First of all, why can't, my chairman, can't, why, why can't oh, um, uh, Victor join us? You know, if Victor can join us, if he dials in, we'll answer, we'll, we'll accept. Um, Victor, but, can you dial in, please? No, huh? I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think Victor wants to dial in. Okay. I understand. I don't think he wants to dial in. I don't think he wants to dial in. So first of all, what are your thoughts about this whole, like how much do you even know about this whole SIM registration saga? Were you affected? Did you have your SIM blocked at any point in time? And do you know what is going on from the larger uh, broader perspective? 
Um. Okay, Tim is dialing in now. Yeah, I've accepted. Okay. Um. So for I, I've known about the whole SIM registration thing for quite a bit. Um, I just googled and found out that it's it's actually a five-year-old program. And um, as with as at, um, no, we're not frozen. No, we're not frozen. It's your internet connection. Yeah. Lagos connections. <laughs> Come on. Wait, yeah. but Tim, Tim, make sure you don't have it open in two places. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't have it open in two places. Okay. Yeah, we're getting I don't know why. Are you, are you, are you, static energy. So anyway, the Steam registration thing. I I really don't know what the uh, hoopla is all about. Is that what they call it? Um, this is a six-year-old program that should have been done in six months. Yeah, it should have been over in in six months. But um, there are many questions that have arisen. Because first of all, um, the responsibility of SIM registration was that of the NCC, the regulator. They were supposed to do the registration. And there was money budgeted for it. Um, I'm not saying anything, but I'm saying something. Um, the fact that it was uh, budgeted for, the money disbursed. However, it was given to the telcos to register. Now, the, the challenge is, or the challenge became the fact that each telco used different uh, suppliers. Yeah? Um, I happen to know one or two people that actually did the same registration. And when you're using two diff different suppliers, there are different methodologies, uh, procurement acts, in different companies, follow different processes. Different people yes. have different prepared people. Different software. Um, software. Yeah. So, um, because of that, um, first of all, even the way it was done, there was not standardization in the first instance. So we had people that had to do and undo, redo. Um, that was one. And uh, number two, there was no enforcement per se. Yeah. Number two, there was no enforcement per se because. Um, the fact that they had several deadlines, and the first deadline was in 2012 or so, um, it wasn't really enforced. Now, of course, I want to say that um, the thing is, if people spend money on what you were supposed to spend, I think there'll be a little bit of uh, uh, the authority you have to call them to order would uh, be diminished a bit. So I think that would have um, uh, made caused a little bit of problems. And of course, the fact that it was scattered, so five telcos or four telcos, including or excluding Visa phone, had different methods and different ways. There was no really, there was no um, objective way to track how many people have done, how many people haven't done, and everything. So I think all those things um, coincided um, with um, the the very messed up way it is right now to, to but, create um, the, this scenario we have now. Tim, what do you think? Um, well, actually, there, there are quite a number of challenges. Um, I, I, doing some research for this particular Hangout session, I realized that actually this is not the first time that um, any African country will do SIM registration. But the problems are all the same. You know, the, the challenge of registering an incredible amount of users has been a burden um, mm -hmm. for the telcos. Um, and, 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 and you can actually see that there, there, there are a number of instances where um, things that could have been done properly were not done. Um, one very important thing to note is that in, in all of these exercises, um, the, 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 the regulatory body has always taken a backseat. And I, I, I always like to contrast what is happening um, with the issue of SIM registrations now with that of the BVN registration. BVN registration started in 2014. And to a large extent, you will say that um, the central bank and the, 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 the big commercial banks have been rather successful with that exercise. Um, and, and I think that the telcos and, and, and the Nigerian Communication Commission um, need to actually learn from the example of the, the, the banks. No, um, sorry. I, I'm I sorry, sorry. I'm not trying to interrupt, but this exactly keys into what I was saying, right? The regulator... Yeah. And <laughs> one supplier did it. Yeah, sorry. And so, um, yeah, so I, I think I think it's actually that there, there are quite a number of instances where um, the operators, you, you know, together with 
the regulatory body could have actually done a, a better job. Um, it, let's let's be honest. It's it, it's it's this is not a comparison of apples to apples, really. Um, you cannot directly compare the the exercise of the BVN registration with that of the telcos. It, they are completely different um, exercises, and they shouldn't be compared side by side. Uh, first and foremost, the number of um, subscribers is several times more than five times as more as as the the number of bank account holders and if if you look at uh the the number of registrations that have been supposedly done both officially and unofficially um the telcos have not particularly done a bad job if we were going to do a apples to apples comparison uh, but that's not to say that they have done their job very well um, one one important thing to note is just like oo said this exercise has started since 2011. Mm -hmm. This is five years later, and mm -hmm. the exercise has not been completed yet. What went wrong? Okay, what, what could have been done better? These are the things that I'm hoping that we'll be able to address in mm -hmm. our conversation today, and uh, you know, to be able to shed a little light on, on, on what can be done to improve the process going forward. So, I mean, so that obviously segues into kind of like, you know, a question of what are the technical imperatives, what needs to happen, uh, you know, for, I mean, in an ideal scenario, uh, for, for them to capture the information properly and the things that they should have done, the things they should not have done. Um, I don't know, Tim, do you want to just like dive into that right now, begin to speak to, you know, say, pretend that you were the one that was assigned the contract? you know, to do the whole thing, not for just MTN or Glow or Salado or Airtel, like, the, you know, if it was, or what in your opinion would be the best way to go about it? Okay. Um, let me just shed a little light into some of the numbers that have been thrown around, both officially and unofficially. Um, you know, some people in the industry say that um, the three other operators, that's Globalcom, Airtel, and the TSALAT have been able to achieve roughly about 80% registration of all their subscribers. Um, you know, that roughly, you know, stands at between 19,000 and 25,000, sorry, 18 million and 25 million uh, sub registered subscribers per operator. Now, you know, we all know about the saga with MTN and the operators and, you know, the heavy fine that was really uh, levied on them. And a lot of times people are very, very quick to point accusing fingers at uh, the operator, MTN. Um, but in looking at the numbers, I, I, what I can see is that MTN has pretty much done about the same amount of registration as the other operators. But of course, because they have a higher number of um, subscribers, um, if you look at it in, 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 in percentage, if you look at it percentage wise, they have done very, very little. They haven't even covered 50% of their subscriber base. Now that, that, that is a significant problem. How could they have done this better? You know, how would they have solved this problem? I don't think it's an issue of a technical, I don't think it's, a, it's an issue of a lack of technical expertise. They, they had five years to do this. It's more than enough time for them to have been able to register all their subscribers. But there are so many more problems that are, you know, beyond just fixing the problem at the technical level. Um, you have to also understand that there are costs associated with this registration. And the operators, even though to some extent, you would say that they are responsible for that, um, they would not like to bear the cost. Sorry, well, hold on. Um, to, to ask a question, you do forward slash Q, forward slash Q, then space, then ask your question. Forward slash Q, then a space, then ask your question. So it will come to the question. What is that? Yeah. Exactly what is that? Okay, so um, you know that the, there is there is the, the the will. I think it's more about an issue of the will. Um, the operators, I, 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 to be honest, you know, I, I'm I'm going to be very very honest. I, I think this is really more of something that the the, the commission could have done better. Um, you know, this this approach of 
this is your problem, go and fix it. You have to register all your subscribers. And then not offering a way to work with the operators to achieve this. I think that attitude really needs to change. Um, I, I'm not so close to any of my, any sources in either the operators or the, 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 the commission. But, you know, just looking from the, from, from the exterior and, and, and seeing the way things have played out, I think that there is a lot that the commission could have done to, to make this exercise. Um, the truth is, the Simpocalypse, whatever name we want to call it, um, I don't think it's really going to happen. You know, the truth is, we're going to keep shifting these deadlines until eventually we get a sizable number of subscribers registered. Um, I find, trust, I, I find I, that very I, fascinating I, that, you, that you say that because I've been looking I, for, I, for the date of this deadline, you know, because we've been I, hearing I, about a deadline and we're hearing about a deadline and the line keeps shifting, but there is no actual date. And I find that fascinating. So, you know, everything just has to be properly managed. Um, it's important that people actually get to understand how serious it is and comply. But it, it's not as simple as it sounds. And in, in, in reading reports around the web about how SIM registrations have gone, has been conducted in other countries, we are, we are no different really. And the same challenges that apply to operators and uh, regulators in other African countries. Really, this is really an African problem. Okay, it's, it's a big so, African problem. So someone's asking a question. They say, did the commission share the money that was allocated to it with the operators? That is, did any of the, the um, that budget allocation that OO was speaking about, was there any of it earmarked and given to the telcos to help them execute or the telcos had to go execute at their own expense? Are you asking me? Uh, anyway, it's open. Like, if, you, whoever, if, you ask me, if you ask me, what I go ask? Um, <laughs> 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 you wanted to use me as a uh, social media bill uh, uh, point uh, example. No, well, I, I, think, I mean, to be honest, like it doesn't. It doesn't sound like. Yeah. I think going back, know. going back to what Tim is saying, right, and everything ties down to how things are executed in Nigeria. It's only in Lagos Monday morning. Someone will now start fixing lights on a highly trafficked road, right? No project management, nothing, yeah? They will just mm. come block a part of the road and just start fixing. Mm. Um, I think this is, a, this is a project management issue. First of all, uh, this thing was supposed to, I, I disagree with him in the sense that he's saying new ban, um, the, the bank registration was, is different. I don't, I don't think it's different. This is identity registration, yeah? And um, 30 million people who have been registered for the banks or more, and if they did 30 million in 18 months, um, understanding that first of all it is was limited um, to the number of um, retail retail outlets or branches, and mm -hmm. uh, the telcos had a bigger budget and they had uh, a wider a wider reach, so there was absolutely mm -hmm. nothing preventing them to do even better. All they needed it to do mm -hmm. was to coordinate it, right, hit milestones enforce punishments if you have not hit the milestones and 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 all, all have you what happened was that uh, with mtn i think they have used they have done it thrice or something yeah and um, they use different like i said they use different um, providers and this person did it. i don't know how the the procurement process was done but the first person did it the person did it in a different way uh, there were some standards so before before yeah. now you could even use uh, the picture of a monkey or a goat or whatever. So, so people were seeing plates, yam, as the big... Okay, what happened was that um, um, through through the beds of the head, uh, the air, the, the people registering SIM were incentivized wrongly. At least I know on the MTN side. Um, they were incentivized um, wrongly. Um, so what happened was that I wouldn't fully blame MTN, but they are still culpable. Um, so people just kept on registering whatever... Um, whatever they could register, yeah? Hmm. And later on, hey, we have done 100 million, only for them to see that they registered cattle and everything. So, and again, secondly, people were, uh, people, people needed to sell SIM cards. So when you're selling SIM cards on the streets, um, those people have to make it, the easier they make it for you. You know in Nigeria, yeah. driver's license, people, people so help you. Nobody, nobody wants to go uh, to the registration center and, and sit down, you know, they just want to sit there in their house and have someone bring the same to them. I will, they'll pay my, like 10x the price if, for convenience. 
no, people are just ready to sell it to you for free. I bet you just go register this hundred sim. I just give you two k. No, I say hey, children around, right? I come and take picture. Come and play. Come and so I see shirtless children and all that. And um, I, I still put that it back is, to that is nice. no, no, no. But it's still the responsibility of the of the of the people that gave them the original task the to say the okay, mandate. To, the original mandate to say, oh, after three months, how many have registered? Let's look at let's let's yeah. let's through and everything. You know, so it's a it's a project management failure. And I people are talk. asking. There's two, there's two questions now that are basically saying the same thing. One from I am Big Dan, another from Abimbola, and basically why this was not conducted the way the banks uh, did it in such a way that that information is inter inter it interacts with each other. It's inter it's interlinked, and it's a shared database so that you know everybody has the same information or. Maybe not everybody has the same information, but that information is in one repository that the NCC can tap into. You know, like how how do they even overlook that kind of no-brainer? So I think I should also chip in by saying that this the problem we're currently having with SIM registration is a classic identity management problem. Um, you know, OO said something about SIM registration being the same as BVM. And I, I like to say that it is very different. Uh, first of all, here, here, here's, here are my arguments. Um, you have to understand that GSM created a leveling field. The, int the, 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 the introduction of GSM services into the country for the first time actually enabled even people who are on back to have access to communications technology. We talk about subscriber numbers as being close to 160 million people, and we have just about 30 million banks or bank accounts. What about the remaining 120 million people? Where are they? Well, so those are, you those see are that active it, lines, and we've been telling them for years to stop counting active lines as human beings because people have two, three friends. <laughs> True, <laughs> indeed, indeed, indeed. I, I, I would, I would, I would not. This is more or less a, a, an issue of numbers, right? But yeah. if, you, if you still go back to the, the, the foundation of what I'm trying to say is that you have a lot of people who do not have a bank account who have cell phones, right? So BVN does not capture those people, all right? So, and, and you have to understand that, you know, there, there are lots of people, it, it's, a, it's a logistical nightmare to register SIM lines that belong to people who stay in very, very remote areas. Tim, I don't understand why you are making excuses for people that have been given a project to do, right? They do, they do census, right? Do you know what census means? Census means that whether you want to or not, whether you have a SIM card or not, you have to be counted, right? And censuses are done, do you know how detailed censuses are done, right? They are done within a year, yeah? Censuses are done, people no go on bait, uh, you, you said? I said no doubt, no doubt. Yes, so the, thing, the fact of the matter is this, right? The CBN executed on 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 new band, uh, the BVN, as I said, new band, the BVN, because they used one supplier and they monitored it. They put very hard pressure and enforced, they enforced the law. If you said that, well, I know it's not going to happen, then why would you ever do it, right? So you have to hold who is responsible, responsible. The NCC is ultimate uh, uh, was ultimately responsible to ensure um, that these things were done six, five years ago, half a decade, half a decade, half a decade. Do you know what that is? Do you know how many children were born in half a decade? Do you know the population growth? Do you know the subscriber growth? Yeah. So first of all, the fact of the matter is that even from 2011, which was when I came back, you could still get a SIM card. Um, uh, not, I didn't just get back, but I returned again and I got a new SIM card, right? I could still get, um, I could still get, a, what do you call it? Um, a SIM card without registering, right? So for the BVN, once you started, there was a line, right? The issue, there are two issues, right? Backdating and updating people, right? And moving forward, anybody, you can open a bank account, out registering your uh, doing your BVN, right? So if the telcos had enforced um, what they were supposed to enforce, 
by uh, and of course on, on that supervision from the SEC, no one no one getting a SIM card after 2011 would have got a SIM card without doing registration. Yeah, then would have been talking about the backdating the uh, the other people. But you see, five telcos that was when Visa Phone was still there, and maybe uh, Starcoms or something, right? We're doing their uh, we're executing the same registration at different places, right? Taking their time. And of course, when the first, second, third, fourth, fifth deadlines were coming and going, right? They were not enforced. There's nothing like simple calypse. If you have already been given a rule, right? Of course, I know Gwenga has his own, um, his own, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, valid issues with the whole identity management system of Nigeria, right? But what, yeah. if, if, if you have, if, you, if they have been given a rule, right, and you don't enforce it, then people will take it for granted. If you enforce it, people will grumble and they will conform. Okay, okay, let me cut in. Let us assume hypothetically, hypothetically, that this deadline was enforced. What, do, what, what, what will the fallout look like in practical terms? Well, that means I mean, that I forty percent. That means forty percent of all GSM subscribers will be cut off. Or oh, let, let me just say, subscribers of lines will be cut off. And and that is that is a significant amount of number of, of lines. And um, you know, there are so many reasons why that will not happen, because you can just imagine the economic impact that that would have on the operators and even on the economy itself. So, you, you know, when we talk about deadlines and we talk about simpocalypse, you know, we need to be really realistic. And, and, and I'm not saying that this is just something that applies to um, those of us who are discussing it, but even the commission and the, and, and, and the telcos who are mostly the commission, you know, I, I think that the way that we're going about this, there are ways in which it can actually be improved. And, and we need to sit down and, and have a, a proper discussion about what the problem is and how we go about solving this problem. You know, if, if, you, go, if you go on the commission's website and, and you see the reasons that they give for the necessity for SIM registration, um, I, I actually begin to see that it, it, it is more in the interest of the commission than it is of the operators. So where is the will for the operators to really push such an exercise? Let's look at BVN as an example. The banks had interest in making sure that that exercise went through successfully. In a situation where you have people taking loans under false identities from different banks, it was in the interest of every bank to ensure that they had one common identity tying one individual to all the accounts that they had in their bank. So it, it was a win-win scenario for both the central bank and the banks. I don't see a win-win scenario here for the, the commission and the telcos. And, and that has to be created. That argument needs to be created that would ensure that everyone comes to the table and works together to ensure that this thing happens. Because five years, come on. I agree with Sim in the oh, sense that... Oh, it's, it's, not, it's not project management. It's not wait, project agree, management. No, no, it is, I think. <laughs> I, agree with, I agree with Sim in the sense that for opt-in, I, I, I come from the governance school of Buhari and Erufai. You understand right which is enforcement right this guy is a nice guy i can see uh, victor saying plus one these guys are democrats right they're saying you have to buy in when you buy in, you do what you're supposed to do right however if for instance um as of 2012 right they cut it off they did a deadline first of all remember for you to have legitimacy when you're enforcing very autocratic uh, rules right not necessarily autocratic, when you're being autocratic in the enforcement of rules yeah because it's not autocratic if the rules have already been agreed to yeah in a democratic manner when you're being autocratic when you're in an autocratic manner enforcing rules right um you have to do to get legitimacy you have to do what you're supposed to have done so for example if all telcos for instance right okay, let us go technical Right, and said, Hey, everyone, with the, of course, with all this spam, they had been spamming us to take money under false pretenses. They had been spamming because, first of all, these telcos are making money, right? So, let us assume 
that it was their responsibility on the, to pay for for it yeah and these telcos had been telling the customers saying for the period of uh, what they got for the period of let's say three months right we're talking of 2011 right around june for a period of three months every day you're going to be told to go and register the spam was more than that and told that there's a deadline and you keep on receiving this spam every single day or this reminder okay. every single day technically the spam is a reminder yeah yeah <laughs> reminder right? every single day and saying that go and register go and register and the only way to stop that message coming is to go and register if in January, do not cut them off. We'll find you. Maybe I wouldn't find two hundred thousand, so it will be it won't be too much. So we start negotiating. But it had I like the, this fifty billion type, right? So if as a January first or January second, people were not getting, getting cut off, then we'll find the telcos a lot large a lump sum, right? Now on January, if after receiving a text message for ninety days. Where would you go and complain, or who would you complain to? But the problem is that for most people, most people think that, like, like Sim is saying, well, they will have to extend it. They will have to extend it. Yeah. You, once you ex immediately you do not enforce a rule, there is nothing saying that you would the people should obey because you will not enforce it the second time or the third time or the fourth time. You get what I'm saying? I use my old plate number, and of course, thankfully, they have changed the rules, right? And because I was never arrested, there was really no need for me to change my plate number, you know, and there was no need to enforce it. So you cannot have a law without enforcement. So if you do not enforce it, forget all this buying and all those things. If they were not cutting off people's uh, 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 bank access from people, cutting off people from bank, um, uh, cutting off access from bank accounts, people would not have complied. So I come from the school of Erufi, um, Erufi's uh, uh, administrative uh, enforcement which is that you give people the requisite time, give them the requisite tools, then when you're coming, you come hard. I, I kind of agree with you because I was in Kenya when the BVM poker lift happened uh, and it, it, had, it screwed with me. Um, my bank account was frozen, obviously. And I remember I had already done my BVM uh, with Standard, but I hadn't linked my GT Bank account the BBN thing and when it happened you know it was basically I had to go and link it the internet thankfully was um, I was able to do it but I think the fact that there was a hard stop uh, and then the banks were already you know obviously pushing it and we were seeing that they were really committed to making it happen actually just incentivized everyone to make sure that they got it done so what it looks like is if you don't actually you know impose the sanctions and come down hard maybe it just will not happen maybe we'll never maybe they'll keep shifting it what do you think, Tim? Okay, sanctions are, sanctions are good. Um, and definitely, uh, it, it has the potential to actually improve uh, the registration. Mm -hmm. But my question is, this has already been happening. People are already having their lines being cut off. But how much of an effect is that having on the registration process itself? Um, it, it, it's not enough, you know, of course, definitely that is one motivation, motivating factor that will drive people to go to the registration centers to, to register their minds. Um, I'll give you an example of, you know, there are technical problems and there are managerial problems and there are political problems. But let's even look at the technical problems, if, if we could start with that, since that is something that we could easily say, oh, you know what, this can be improved, this can be improved, that can be improved. I had my line registered twice. The first time I did my registration, I did it well. For some reason, can I, 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 can I, I, I got a text yeah. from the operator saying that, oh, I needed exactly. to come and do my registration again. Now, obviously, I, I, I kept I asking myself, I yes, obviously, obviously. No, <laughs> obviously. I think you... I mean, you have to understand that they have like times two the problems of every other operator, right? So, oh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm not giving an excuse. I, I, I have to state the problems as they are, okay? And, and, and I'm trying as much as possible to objective. I have, I have no, I have no interest in any of the operators or the commission. But 
you know, my perspective is that this problem is beyond just capacity or the ability for the operators to do what they're supposed to do. I, you know, you mentioned things like project management. If this was a commercial enterprise and the operators had something significant to benefit in this exercise, we would have seen registration. Same registration would never have been an issue. Yeah. But but then you know there there are problems that need to be tackled, and I think we need to discuss those problems. And and for instance, the fact that I had to if, do if my registration more than once don't have the issue, signifies that there are significant are problems in the registration. The, the, I mean, you just mentioned an instance where and not the person that has not delivered his own project. Mm -hmm. The issue is this: every operator, every there's, there's every operator of has registration this and none of the operators the, has achieved one hundred percent. Enforcement of hundred percent. They're two. They're just they're two different. No, I'm talking of duplicity. Like your, I registered even, my MTN even, SIM even card. The one I used for is, for is there any operator that has one hundred percent? I registered it three times, right? So and it was only MTN. I I I I, I have my Tisalat. I know people that have Glow. I know people that have Airtel. And they never yeah. had this issue. So, so if because, if because, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you a story. Someone, someone once told me that, um, you know, they know, they knew of this particular place here in Lagos where, um, you know, market women who wanted to register their sins would just pay a token fee of 200 naira and give them the phone number and their SIM will be registered. Now, this was what happened. They would experience a, a, a disconnection from the network, you know, because most people don't do anything about SIM registration until their lines get disconnected. And so in, in the scramble to, oh, I, I need to, you know, get my services restored, they look for anybody who is willing to offer that service. And there are professionals, sorry to use that word professionals, um, who have made it you know, individuals who have made it their profession to actually help people do registration. And these are not these are not the authorized agents. But somehow, because there are lots of problems in, 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 in how the exercise has been done, you have people who have some kind of access to the equipment that they use for this registration. I, you know, I've read reports where they actually caught someone who had like 60,000 SIM cards registered under the same individual. How, 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 how do you... Go, how do you have such a, 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 a system? I, I mean, how, how do you have something happen like that where it's possible for someone to do mass registration? There, there were times in Lagos when people were caught selling pre-registered things. You know, th there are lots of problems. And, and this, is, this, is not a, this is not a technical problem. The, the equipment for doing registrations is there. But there are, there are lots of things that we have to consider um, if we're really going to make this thing work. You, you know... Sometimes you even look at the SIM registration exercise as being what really is the point in having SIMs registered? You know, maybe if we started having the conversation from them to the perspective, wait, 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 then wait, wait, it will help wait, us sorry. understand I, I why we're sorry. having the problems yeah. we're having I right think now. I think we're mixing so many things this, together, this is not, this is right? Not the First of all, SIM registration across four telcos. I, I agree. Right? Three telcos have four telcos have a different issue, but same issue, which is they don't have, they have not achieved hundred percent, and only one telco has a particular issue, and has had it, which is duplicity, uh, incomplete registration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you do not wake up in the morning or in the afternoon and decide that because one person has a particular problem. You say, oh, let us go back to the drawing board. It is clear why one person has a particular problem, which is a project management issue, right? You talked about one person having 60,000 um, uh, um, registrations. Of course, I can think of scenarios where it should it could be possible, but one person has 6,000 registrations, yeah? yeah now, yeah. some people, I wouldn't say so, who, but the people that provided or one of the telcos inbuilt, they did this facial recognition stuff, right? And they had a proper checklist to say, okay, maybe one person cannot register. You know the funny thing, for example, mm -hmm. going to a telco, you have another SIM card with MTN especially. I don't like the fact that we're just as if we're bashing MTN, but with MTN especially, you could not put 
the second sim under another registration right so you had to actually duplicate every information take a picture again take all those things again mtn probably now has the best software right but they, they had to fail almost three or four times so there wasn't a coherent management of this project and that is very separate to the issue of enforcement and to the issue of buying and all those other things you have a project you put a deadline you do not manage the project everybody does as they wish you, do, you don't enforce the deadline you don't tell people why they should do it then you expect everything to work it's very clear where the, the initial problem started from right when you sort out that obvious problem they will say okay now we have sorted out this obvious problem which is the duplicity which is only one telco's problem they will now say 100 percent issue then the hundred percent issue is the issue of enforcement because immediately you cut off everyone that doesn't have uh, what do you call it? Immediately cut off everyone that doesn't have a, a, a registration, right? That's it. It's hundred percent. But of course, the telcos are interested. They have selfish interest to allow SIM cards keep incurring um, revenue, right? Which is why they are punished because they have refused to enforce. You know. So let us be very clear what the issue is and let us not be pampering anyone that refuses to enforce um, um, the law or a rule they're supposed to enforce. Mm -hmm. Eric is telling us that um, in Kenya, we have a time bomb. After 90 days, if you don't register your SIM, it cuts off. Okay, so besides the I issue... I don't know that we have that sort of system here. You, if you, Sorry, if you buy a SIM card... If you buy a SIM card... Said what? After 90 Sorry. days, if you Is buy a SIM card after in Kenya, yeah. Oh, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Sorry. If you buy a SIM for card, you, for your Kenya. questions, you type slash Q because, like, the, the yeah. um, slash Q space, then your question. So it, it, there's a the board, there's a dashboard it will come through. Because if you um, yeah. just type it, then people will not really know the difference between chat and the question. Very sorry. Yeah. Well, that's fine because people are using this for the first time as well. Uh, yeah. But there's like the time bomb mechanism, right? That automatically enforces it. So if you don't register your SIM, then it just gets cut off. But I, I'm actually curious, you know, like they've been, what, what is the reason for SIM registration in the first place? You know, is it supposed to, you know, keep people safe, identity management? Like, I don't really, it's not something that we, that I don't, that I think a lot of people understand. You know, why are they doing this in the first place? It just feels like some arbitrary rule. So, well, according to the NCC, the objectives of the SIM registration are, one, to assist security agencies in resolving crimes and, by extension, to enhance the security of the state. Two, to facilitate the collation of data by the Commission about phone usage in Nigeria. Three, to enable operators to have a predictable profile about the users in their networks. And lastly, to enable the commission to effectively implement other value-added services like number portability, amongst others. So this is essentially what the objective of the SIM registration is. Um, as far as I'm concerned, the only thing I read i can read from that that really makes sense is for security enhancement and um of course what that means is that uh, you're going to increase the surveillance powers of the state by making it possible for them to be able to tie real world identities to you know communications that goes on on the uh, on the telcos yeah um, the freedom forum is going whether right that's now, a good thing or just... not that is subject for another conversation. Um, but yeah, obviously. Uh, but you know, th these are essentially, and as you can see, this is part of the reasons why, for me, all, all the other reasons that were stimulated there um, are already things that they have already found solutions for. I mean, you want to tell me MTN doesn't know who their subscribers are? Um, they do, right? And um, it, it, stating reasons such as uh you know so that you'll be able to find out more information about phone usage uh, or you know being able to have predictable profiles and 
implementing other value added services I, I think those are not particularly strong reasons for um you know really really getting buy-in for for this project so you know they, these are these are the reasons why you know the, the ncc so i, I think this is a separate issue one of the one of things we're very, very good at in nigeria is that before. when we're making arguments right this is not has nothing to do with sin mm -hmm. right we convolute we convolute so many things like this issue of um, um, devaluation of naira and the spread between black market and official rates right that's two different issues right so when everyone is tweeting and just talking 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 right no one actually knows what we're talking about hmm. now this issue of uh, identity management privacy and all those other things that is what uh Malga, Menga has been fighting as a one-man band right uh um, for me, it depends on what you see the status, right? Are you liberty, libertarian or whatever they call it, right? Do you think that everybody should just do what they want to, right? Or uh, do you think you see a strong state, a strong central government and all those other things? Um, for me, I've not really made up my mind as regards, I, I really don't mind, right? It's not the fact that I have nothing to hide. Um, I, I, I don't think the, the struggle is, is, is worth it, yeah? I don't think the struggle is worth it. Um, um, however, um, like Rosanwo and most people have already said uh, above, the fact is that um, there has to be a way to identify people in the country. Yeah, if you need to identify the people, now, <clears throat> now, whether um, you can, um, how do I put it? Whether you can. Um, uh, so, for example, in the UK, I don't use SIM registration, right? You can just go and buy a SIM. However, if you do anything in the UK, from as you the day where you enter Heathrow, the camera, there's camera watching you, right? Anywhere, especially in London, every angle, every block, they can trace everything about you. So the fact that you can wake up in one as hey, UK doesn't do SIM registration, uh, SIM registration, but they do this other one that is very invasive, right? If you go to Stocky, you cannot have a SIM card except you register, right? And I think it's very expensive. I think what they did, they now put the registration on the cost on the customer, right? To register a SIM card is, is, is quite expensive in talking, right? And you cannot get uh, a SIM card without that. In the US, there are different ways and different different uh, methods, right? So I think this issue of um, privacy, one, like with anything in Nigeria, we don't look at things holistically and say, oh, we want to do this because of this and we'll not do that, right? It's like, hey, UK did it, oh, Britain did that. Even if there's a there's a conflict, so that that's um, that that's that's about it. That's my my perspective. That is not really really clear. Mm -hmm. And I, I like I said, I'm not too democratic. Mine is like, oh, the state has said this. You should be able to enforce it. You should be able to enforce. It. This is a very simple. This is so straightforward. If I give my Oga Victor this project in eight, eight months, you know, this will be done. You cut it off. It's just that simple. It's like people saying that. How can a ministry owe lights? Never bill for is it five years? Like it doesn't happen, right? People say someone is owing me, but when they said doing prepaid, people were owing uh, phone, do you own phone bill. Have you ever owned old phone bill? Apart from borrowing me cash, where you cannot do more than X amount, have you ever owned a phone bill? But people would say, um, oh, you know how it is. You can't really cut off people. What do you mean you can't cut off people? Whereas that same person has never owed MTN. Right, but you want to owe NEPA, then they will put postpaid. They'll say, Oh, this is how it should work. So the issue is enforcement for this particular project to be executed. I don't know about the human rights aspect, I don't know about the privacy issue, but for the enforcement of this project, if the government wants to be serious and taken seriously, they should do final broadcasts, tell people on X amount of days. I'm going to cut it off. How long do you think it's realistic? Ajao, how, many think, how long do you think is realistic? Now, one week. <laughs> to do the whole thing. Yeah, to cut it off. No, it's enough. No, no, it's enough no, time. No, to, it off. no. To, to actually... <laughs> Listen, I'm talking like this. Nobody no, will no, vote no. me for president. I, I don't, I don't yeah. think it's... Yeah. This is six years. This is six years. Yeah, but like, okay, forget about all the time that has passed. If you, if you, you know, and, you know, just how long? You know, four weeks, two months, and then after that, no excuses. Tim, you want to say something? Oh, okay. Okay. I, I stand to be corrected. So these men, uh, Rosanwo and this, they said, uh, you use your ID card. 
when you're in the UK. So I, I just I just didn't think about it because there's no SIM registration per se, right? So use your ID card. Um, use your use your use your ID card when you're buying stuff. When you're buying a new SIM card, right? Um, whether it's your real ID card or whatever, you know, black people look alike. Uh, it's separate, right? But use your ID card. You don't do um, you don't do this. Uh, what do you call this? Uh, what uh, uh, what what they call it now? Uh, thumbprint, I iris, biometrics. You don't do biometrics. You know, um, they just use your ID card. They take a copy, now, I think. Yeah. Biometrics, okay. <laughs> uh, no need for thumbprint or anything. Your ID card and it functions because they can get you in two weeks, in two days, in two hours, you know. Uh, so, like people have said, another argument is the issue of identity management in Nigeria, which is a separate argument. So we cannot be talking about should they cut off the project management, identity management in yeah. just one conversation. If not, everything will be modeled up. You ask a question about identity management and somebody will be talking about project management challenges. So I think that is a separate yeah. conversation. What I believe this is about is that they are cutting off SIMs today and why has it got to this point? You know, not whether we should have registered SIMs in the first place or whether this is the best uh, methodology to follow. Yeah. Uh, is, there, is, there, is there any last things that you want to say, Tim? And oh, oh, because you've been very insightful. Back and, and forth I, on this. Yeah, it's. Um, I don't know that. I don't know that this is going to end. And uh, I do respect your time. I know that it's almost not um, the end of lunch time for for a lot of people. Probably want to get back to work and stuff. Um, but if you could just like you know put this a neat bow tie on this, uh, what would you say in terms of you know just looking at everything we've said? Uh, final words, Tim. I want to go first. Yes. Um, so, like we have all kind of discussed, this has been very enlightening, and um, I'm sure this is uh, going to be putting every, compiling a, a seed for other conversations that are going to happen, you know, around this topic. Uh, but one of the things, yeah, okay. So, my last words will be that um, for projects like this, um, you know, there needs to be proper stakeholder involvement. Um, if um, the NCC, you know, has the directive to ensure that every mobile SIM is registered, I believe that it is their prerogative to ensure that they bring all the relevant stakeholders and have a conversation about how they can go about this. Now, I'm not saying that they probably haven't done that, but it, 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 there needs to be efforts by every stakeholder to really ensure the success of this project. Um, it's, it's, not, it's not enough that we, we have enforcement and we say things like, oh, you have to cut off mobile SIM cards. It's not exactly a, 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 an easy solution to this problem. MTN is having to pay a very hefty fine on this same issue. And, and um, I'm not so sure if that is making any significant difference in the push towards ensuring that everyone gets registered. So I, I think that there are lots of things that could be said around this topic. We, we've delved into so many other things. Uh, but I think that if we're really going to ensure that this impocalypse doesn't happen, um, I think we need to have a, a, a better lot, yeah, conversation I, about how we go. I think about if we're having a, a, a if you want to think of a broad, broader conversation, <clears throat> it goes back into um, um, what Tim said, uh, stakeholder, just simple, simple standard project management stuff, right? If there's a massive project, right, you have to bring in the stakeholders, even the issue of procurement act and all those other things, right? And there's no way somebody, okay, in Benin City, for instance, because they were arguing, the federal government, oh my good God, the Edo state government wanted to expand the road. And because of wickedness and politics, the federal government, ideally, one, either the federal government or the state government would do the whole road, six lanes. Now, because they were arguing, right, or they're doing politics, the middle two lanes in Edo states is on a different level from the 
outer extra lane. Why? Because the Edo State government did the expansion and the federal government said that they cannot do the middle one. So what we, what we now have in Edo State is that there, there is just a convolution on the Benin Lagos Express Road passing through Bobo to Selu and all those places. This is the same thing that happening with the same registration. When you have a project at hand, right, ideally you should have one one, uh, one structure of authority, yeah, and one person manages the project, especially if the project is related and involving multiple parties, you know. Then the issue of procurement and getting the vendors, because if they had vendors, every vendor would have come in with their own proposition saying, oh, this one would have said, hey, I would have, um, I would, this is how I would execute it, I would have um, um, uh, facial recognition and all those other things. So I think there are fundamental system failures that brought us to this uh, place where we are. And finally, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a proponent of enforcement. You know, if you don't enforce the rule or the law, then I don't think there's really reason to have the law. Yeah, that's it. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much. Oh, oh thank you so much. <laughs> No, Victor, uh, we talked about the money that is collected, though. We talked about it, but, you know, yeah, if you ask, yeah, who I will ask? Victor, for people who joined us late into the conversation, OO the Nigerian is the CEO and co-founder of CallBase, a telephony software as a service company based out of Lagos called a global company. And they help you set up remote call centers from right inside your browser. You should check them out. CallBase. CallBase.co. Dot dot CEO. CallBase .co. Fantastic. Yeah. That's a T-shirt. Um, I'm sure if you ask him nicely, he'll send you one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and Timba Timba is the CEO of Timba Objects, and they do some really, really geeky stuff. I'm just going to read that again. Timba Objects uh, is an enterprise software development agency that is currently focused on providing mobile data collection and data analysis tools. And obviously, that is why he was eminently qualified to be in on this conversation. Thank you so much. For making out the time and we'll see you again. <laughs> this is the first of many broadcasts, so leave a comment about what we should talk about the next time we're doing this. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining, and um, we'll see you some other time next time. All right, bye bye. All right, then, bye. <laughs>